As we're all no doubt aware, the most popular operating system for uh, personal computers these days is Windows, and any attempts to replace it in a professional setting, or in any sort of setting really, are uh, met with varying degrees of success. On Linux you have the Wine Project, which runs quite a number of Windows applications, but uh, doesn't really do most of them as well as Windows would, which is kind of expected. And otherwise, there are some native Windows stuff for Linux and uh, Mac OS, but for a lot of things, you're stuck using Windows. However, starting in 1998 and uh, picking up a fair amount of traction more recently has been the project React OS, a operating system that's not Linux or anything, it's, but it is designed to replace Windows. Um, the website says it aims to be binary compatible with Windows Server 2003, which is a bit of an odd choice, I would have thought, but uh, I don't know anything about these things, so they know best. Anyway, point 4.4 .4 of React OS was released very recently, so I thought I'd give it a bash in VMware and um, see what it can do. The initial installation was very quick and easy. I uh, was quite surprised at that because, like I said, it's in a virtual machine and VMware has no idea what React OS is, so it's thinking it's a Windows XP. But yeah, it, it works absolutely fine, it's very very quick, and uh, it's ready to go in less than a minute after uh, putting the disk in, so that's good. The first time I installed it, I had to reboot, because uh, you've, you've got all the dialog boxes to choose your language, and um, the it shows you where all the uh, GPL stuff comes from, all the projects that they've used uh, as part of React OS. So you click past all that. First time I did that, it, I had to reboot again before it would let me in, but the second time I installed it, it was uh, absolutely fine, which was a bit odd. Something else that's odd is, uh, this This may be something to do with the virtual machine. Um, when you first start the operating system, two unknown devices appear. Uh, one of them's a s called just called system device and the other's called audio device. Neither of them actually install properly, they just fail to install uh, and they don't really seem to do a whole lot anyway so it's not a problem. Uh, it's just worth mentioning that it is still in alpha so you've come to expect these things. Um, the next thing I noticed when trying to uh, just messing about with stuff was that the copying was a bit iffy. I, uh, some things copied absolutely fine, other things just would not copy at all and there was no feedback to suggest that there was copying or anything. I tried um, the keyboard shortcuts, you know, Control C, Control V. I also tried cutting and pasting. Um, and again, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Sometimes um, dragging it across worked, uh, but that just moves it and it doesn't copy it. I didn't try right click dragging, I have to say. So, um, don't know if that works. You can try it if you want. The next thing I noticed was that floppy disks aren't picked up. I tried to install something from a floppy disk and I went to my computer after putting, because um, in Reactor, uh, not Reactor, in VMware I put a floppy disk image in and that usually works. It worked fine in Windows 98 and XP, but it didn't work on React. So I'm guessing they haven't done the floppy disk bit yet because nobody's using floppy disks, so uh, that might be the reason. On a similar note, 16 bit programs flat out don't work. The software says that it's just not ready yet, it's not been done yet. I do suspect that as support will be added at some stage, but it's probably quite a low priority thing at the moment. USB flash drives can be connected to the system, but I couldn't find a way to eject them. So if such a way exists, then maybe, I don't know, maybe I just missed it, but I couldn't see it in any of the obvious places. It wasn't in the system tray, and when I right clicked on the flash drive, there was no eject button. So I just had to uh, yank it out. It didn't seem to break the drive though, so that's fine. There is no audio at the moment. The wiki does mention this. Um, there is a way to get audio to sort of register, but apparently it just crashes the OS straight away, so it's best to leave that to the devs for the time being and uh, let them sort of prepare it and uh, make sure it's working. When you go to the mouse pointer screen, uh, you can change the pointers, but it doesn't have any effect. Similarly, pointer shadow doesn't have any effect either. That's not a major thing. Like I said, low priority. Doesn't really matter. 
Sometimes when you got a few windows open on top of each other and uh, one of them's doing stuff, uh, it is a little bit dodgy, the rendering. Sometimes it'll try and display the the window behind in front of the window that's in front, which is... Uh, it just doesn't work very well. I'm guess I'm assuming that's like part of the the virtual machine because it obviously it's an alpha thing so it's not gonna know what the virtual machine is and the virtual machine doesn't know what it is so the graphics things aren't gonna be perfect on a similar note that when sometimes when you open full screen applications the taskbar stays up in front of the application which is a little bit odd but just pressing alt tab does normally fix it um, and the first time I rebooted it after it fully installed um, and I'd been using it for about an hour uh, it blue screened and then it just totally broke it wouldn't wouldn't boot back up again so I had to reinstall the whole OS not exactly a problem because you know alpha VMware said that the CPU was in a shutdown state I can't remember exactly what it said but it was something along those lines um, and like I said this is a very early alpha, 0.4.4, .4, so you can't really expect it to work perfectly yet, but it does work incredibly well, considering it is an early alpha, it's, it's surprisingly good. Anyway, enough waffle, let's get onto the actual applications and see what works. First of all, we'll look at the applications manager that came with the operating system, that seems to work well enough. It's not perfect as yet, it could do with some polish. Um, maybe look to Ubuntu's application manager and uh, Linux Mint. I think it's pretty similar to that actually, but you know, it's just a pretty standard list of stuff as of yet. But it's early days, like I've said, so. I, I think they'll probably make that look a bit better, but it works fine so far, so, you know, no complaints really. I installed 7-zip to deal with some zip files that I downloaded and that works like a charm. I'm wondering if it's um, they could get in touch with the developer and like slipstream it into the, soft, in the, into the system itself. Because that would be good. Um, I don't know how it handles zips normally, I don't think it's capable of doing so, but uh, I didn't actually test it. Sumatra PDF, uh, when I went to install that, the actual installer was... <laughs> it was all over the place, the text was off, the... Um, the little box asking you where you want to install it was missing. The only thing that was there was the uh, install button itself. But once I had got it installed, it, it worked absolutely fine. Um, could zoom in and out and do all the stuff. And it was okay. Those are all the like, utility applications I try. Next, we're going to look at some browsers. Uh, I didn't try Firefox this time. That's um, a popular one. Reason is, I tried it in a previous version and it was a little bit iffy. Um, first of all, the uh, controls at the top, you know, the minimize and close and all that, they didn't actually show up, they weren't rendered by the system, so it was a bit awkward to use. And generally it was kind of slow, but it seemed to work alright. Again, probably a VM issue uh, with the slowness. So I didn't try it this time. I did try Opera, and that was ridiculously slow to the point of being unusable, but it did render pages alright. Um, I also tried Midori, because that's built as a lightweight browser and is often packaged with um, low resource systems like Puppy Linux and um, the Raspberry Pi. That was that just didn't work and was very slow. And um, when you start it up it fails to load one of its uh, DLLs, comes up with a warning, um, and then just the, the whole system just goes down, so uh, not a good browser to use on React OS. I've put here it gallantly ceases to function. Yeah. One of the browsers that's available in the, um, the application manager is Dillo. That works alright. Uh, it's fairly quick but it doesn't render pages very well and half the pages you try and go to it just doesn't even try to load them. Which is a bit odd. Even simple pages like a Doom World id games page that's not exactly uh, using a lot of modern browser stuff and that just doesn't load so that's a bit odd. The best browser that I came across, or rather the, the one with the best balance between being able to render pages and actually working at a decent speed was Kmelian which again is available in the applications manager. It doesn't really render modern pages well at all. Uh, it'll do alright with Google and some simpler stuff but uh, the Music B website in particular that was just a right mess. But 
On the other hand, it was the quickest of the lot, and uh, it did actually try to load everything. It had a good stab at it, unlike Dillo. So, if you're going to use a browser, I would suggest using Kmelian. It does the job. Those are all the browsers that I looked at. Time to look at some multimedia stuff now, audio and video. I didn't try playing a video straight up, I just tried some different applications to do that. Because videos probably work fine out of the box. The first video application that I tried was MPCHC or Media Player Classic. And that seemed to work okay. The only problem that I had was that it didn't, I, when I played the test video, it was really thin. I don't know why that was, because uh, the video plays fine everywhere else. And it actually played fine in VLC. Uh, VLC appears to work perfectly. This was the newest version of VLC, by the way. Um, I think the website suggests that you use an earlier version, 0.98 or something. But this was the absolute latest version that's available, and uh, yeah, it worked absolutely fine. Music B, as I mentioned earlier, um, this just doesn't install because it claims it doesn't support Windows XP. Which I guess is fair enough, because at the moment I think React OS reports itself as XP. And finally, FUBAR 2000 opened up fine and it would probably work okay. Um, but the software just doesn't work without a valid audio device. Um, I have problems with that a lot with my Sound Blaster Z, it just doesn't pick it up and... Uh, so all it does is send you to the settings screen to uh, find an audio device. So that doesn't work. So that's all the multimedia applications. They all seem to work pretty well. So far we've got a pretty good uh, run of working stuff. But now we're on to the main bit, the thing that everybody cares about. And that is the games. And I started off with a classic. Cheesy Invaders, of course and it works perfectly. I suspect most, if not all, DOS applications work fine. Um, I've seen some other videos where DOS applications just work alright. Um, so I'm assuming that's that's pretty good support. Especially considering things like DOSBox and uh, FreeDOS run most, if not all, DOS applications perfectly. Um, the next thing I tried was Doom Retro. And uh, that has a problem with the renderer. I'm suspecting it has something to do with it being a software renderer, because um, Doom Retro might expect a hardware renderer. But I don't really know. I'm not a developer. I'll leave it to them. Chocolate Doom, on the other hand, worked absolutely perfectly. Um, it, it, I got went through the first level of Doom 1, and uh, it was absolutely fine. No complaints there at all. I didn't try Z Doom or anything like that, because uh, it's a VM. It would probably have run like crap. Next game I tried was Grand Theft Auto 2, and it didn't work at all. It just showed a black screen, and then it crashed to desktop whenever you pressed a key. I tried putting it in window mode using the manager, but it just changed it back instantly. Uh, and I suspect that's the game's fault, rather than uh, React OS. Because I, I seem to recall I've tried it before, and it just didn't work. Next I tried an uh, obscure game called Cool Pool, and this actually works better than it does on uh, current versions of Windows. Because... Um, <clears throat> I wished I played it longer actually just to see if it did do this, but um, on modern Windows versions the sum it up with the renderer and what will happen is every now and then the screen will just go black and you'll have to like the best way I can describe it is wipe it off by moving things around on the screen but that didn't seem to happen on um, React OS and I was surprised at how well it worked actually it was just perfect, absolutely perfect and another game that was absolutely perfect was Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. I only played it in single player, I didn't want to go on internet play because uh, you know what it's like when somebody with crap internet joins your game, it just makes the whole thing crap out. But um, I'm assuming it will work since single player just works fine. Again, I played through the first level and I didn't notice any problems at all. Other than a little bit of screen tearing, but again, I'm guessing that's a VM issue. Civ 2, on the other hand, just would not open at all. It um, came up with that classic error where it says the memory at blah 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 could not be read, quote unquote. Which means nothing to me under Windows, so you can guess it's even more cryptic when it's under React OS. I, um, I think Civ 2 works fine on Windows 10 and stuff, so uh, I think that is a React OS issue. 3D Ultra Pinball 3, I couldn't get it to install because 
the installer is 16-bit, however, it will just run off the CD, and it runs perfectly. The taskbar did stay open during play and the alt tab thing didn't fix it, but uh, it wasn't a problem. I did actually manage to get a bit further in the game than I normally do, but I couldn't tell what the hell was going on. Like normal, <laughs> because it doesn't make any sense. Pets 2, it seemed to work alright, it seemed to work just as well as it does in Windows, but it was very sluggish. Sometimes it is with uh, certain operating systems, I've run it on this computer before and it's been fine and other times it's been really slow. Um, you'll notice that there's a big grey box on the screen, that's something that happens under Windows as well and I don't know why. Something to do with the pets that I have. And they seem to be, I seem to have a corrupted demon pet, which is a bit odd. The next game that I tried was Pro Pinball Time Shock. Um, the main menu didn't actually work, I tried opening it straight up and it just crashed to desktop, very much like GTA 2. Um, you can um, you can open the game from the command line and um, with a little switch you can actually get straight into the game but it just seemed to hang at the loading screen so that wasn't any good. And the final game I tried was Worms Armageddon. It looked like it had loaded um, I couldn't tell obviously because there was no audio. Normally you'd have hear the music playing and that. Um, I think it probably did load but it didn't render anything because the uh, cursor was up on the screen but nothing else. So that was a bit of a no-go as well. And there we have it, React OS 0.4.4. It runs a considerable amount of Windows applications very very well indeed. I'm really surprised at how many games worked fine, especially Corpo, which is such an obscure game and uses such old technology, you'd think it would just run like crap, but it's perfect, and other games just absolutely perfect. I do wonder if it would be even better on um, actual hardware, but I did read somewhere that it's not very good on actual hardware and VMs work better. Um, I do believe also that VirtualBox, it does work better in VirtualBox than VMware. But I couldn't be bothered trying that because uh, my hard drive is running out of space. So if you want to try it in VirtualBox, feel free. I don't know about QEMU or any of the other ones. I just do know that VMware's fine, VirtualBox is supposedly even better. Um, ReactOS is available for free on ReactOS.org if you want to try it out. Um, and you can install it on your computer if you're feeling particularly bold. I suggest you do so because <clears throat> if you've got the time then uh, you can make a video like this and help the developers a lot, hopefully. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that.